Hi, and welcome to my backyard. Today I want to talk to you about a subject that uh, is probably one of the most talked about on Hammock forums, uh, and for good reason. It's what keeps us dry, keeps us out of the elements while we're out in the woods. Uh, it's what we call home when we're out there, and that is the tarp. It's probably talked about more than hammocks themselves. Uh, everybody wants to know what tarp to get, whether to use a continuous ridge line or separate lines off the ends. They want to know about line tensioners. They want to know how tight to pitch it, uh, how to pitch it in the wind, you know, how to pitch it against rain, how low to pitch it, how high to pitch it. There's a ton of subjects just talking about tarps. And today, in particular, I want to talk about this tarp right here and it's the Warbonnet Superfly. Again, this is probably the most talked about tarp. Whenever a newbie comes on and asks what tarp to buy, uh, you can't deny this is probably the number one tarp that is recommended, and for good reason. Uh, for the money you pay for it, the bang for your buck, you can't beat it. This tarp right now, I say, I think is selling for $140. Uh, if you shop around, most of the other vendors will have a tarp, but you have to buy a door kit separately. Or if they have a tarp with doors, it's more expensive. I think Brandon has done a very good job in designing this tarp. Um, if you only had to have one tarp for all seasons, I would say this is the one to go with. Uh, it's got built-in doors. Uh, this one right here has snake skins and all the lines and everything attached and it comes in at about 23, I think it's 23.1 ounces mine. And there's a lot of talk about whether to use continuous ridge lines or separate lines. <clears throat> and I've done both. I started out with a continuous ridge line. The reason I got away from it was most of them use prussics to tension the tarp out. And I found with prussics, a lot of times over, you know, the night they slip and you wake up and your tarp is sagging. And I just couldn't get it right. I've tried several wraps, I've tried five, six wraps, it didn't matter. I've got friends that still use a continuous ridge line. I wake up drinking my coffee, looking around at the tarps. I see their tarps are sagging. <laughs> Since going back to separate lines on my tarp, I have not had a sagging tarp, and I've been happier ever since. Um, I have a Dutch fly attached to each end, probably about 20 feet of line on each end, which is probably overkill, but I don't think there's a set of trees that I'm not gonna be able to hang from, for the most part. So with that, I'm gonna get this set up for you, show you how I set mine up. It's not the only way to set it up. It's not the, you know, there's a hundred ways to do it probably, but I'm gonna show you how I set mine up and then I'm gonna show you a couple of different configurations. One, how I set it up if I'm expecting rain or a lot of wind and cold, uh, which is a storm mode. And then I'm gonna set it up in my favorite way to set it up, which is in porch mode. And I've got a little trick that I came up with for tying the doors off when they're not in use. Uh, I see most people probably tie them off on the outside. Um, I never like doing that because they seem like the wind, if you catch them, they're flopping around. And I think the way that I've come up with is a lot better way. And uh, I'm gonna demonstrate that for you. So with that, let me get this set up here and uh, I'll show you how I set it up. Okay, here's my tarp out of the stuff sack. As you can see, I got the snake skin on it. And notice I said snake skin and not skins. Uh, for this tarp, I made uh, one long python that just sucks the whole tarp up in. My other tarp, I have the separate snake skins which come from either side. Um, not advocating one over the other. I like them both, they both work and do the job that I need them to do. I made this one, actually I made them both out of this. It's like no CM mesh, maybe a little bit heavier. 
and it's just a uh, like a duck blind material for hunting but uh, I use this just because I like it I think it looks cool it's mossy oak camo um, either end of the tarp you can see I've threaded the Dutch fly on the little split ring on either side so it stays with the tarp and then I have my line lark headed onto the same ring what this does is allow me to go around the tree and come right back to the tarp and create the little V that uh, Derek Hansen talks about that allows your hammock to swing in between the uh, lines of the tarp and not get not be bumping into the tarp so <clears throat> That, let's go ahead and set this up on the side. Now, one of the arguments for using a continuous ridge line or a continual ridge line, or however you want to say it, is that you have the ability to be able to slide your tarp back and forth and center it over your hammock. And yes, that's true, you can do that. It makes it a little simple, but to me, that's not a good enough reason to use a continuous ridge line. Um, there's far more more important things to consider when you're using which kind of ridge line you're using. And to me, the most important thing was I don't want my tarp sagging. Uh, and if you tie lines on the end of the tarp, there's no reason that you can't you know center your tarp over your hammock just as quick you know either way we're not what are you saving 30 seconds I mean it's it's not that big a deal and by that I mean I have t uh, hammocks of various you know ridgeline lengths if you know your ridgeline length let's say your ridgeline length is 100 inches and your tarp is 11 feet which is 132 inches that's a difference of uh, uh, 32 inches split that in half that's 16 inches per side I can eyeball 16 inches and get it close I mean this is not rocket science you just want your tarp to be covering your hammock so it doesn't have to be an exact thing this is my newest DIY hammock it's ten and a half feet and I know the ridge line is 103 inches so roughly it's going to be 15 inches either side I can eyeball that and this is how I set my tarp up. I always try to set my tarp up as low as possible over the hammock. Um, the reason being is if I have it up in porch mode and say a storm starts rolling in and I need to drop my tarp down quickly, it's in the middle of the night, I don't want to be out here trying to drop my tarp and, and all that stuff, you know, when a storm's blowing in. So I right off the bat, I pitch it as low as I can. I mean, if I need airflow, that's why I pitch it up in porch mode. I mean, I can pitch both sides out if I wanted to. So I'm gonna eyeball about 15 inches from the end of the hammock. It's gonna be right there, and I need it to be about that high because you don't want it, if you pitch it down here, your suspension from your hammock is gonna be interfering with the tarp. So I pitch it as low as I can without the hammock suspension interfering. And I got a rough idea right there, and that's where I start. And what makes this simple are the Dutch, the Dutch flies on the end. It doesn't get much simpler than this. When you see me set my tarp up, it'll always, most always be below my hammock suspension. Because if it's up here, I mean, that's a good three, four feet off the off the hammock so it most likely will always be below my hammock suspension and I guesstimated about 15 inches and then that's where I start and just lock it down on the Dutch fly and if you want to see how the Dutch fly works there's plenty of videos on that then I just go to the other end and do the same thing okay I've got it set up now as you can see, I've got plenty of coverage on both sides of the tarp, and it's still in the snake skins. This is what I like about the snake skins. I can leave it like this till I'm ready to deploy the tarp, or not deploy it at all, whatever I choose to do. Uh, 
normally I don't sl I don't sleep with it like this. I don't want uh, Florida has a lot of dew, so I don't want the dew on me. So at this point, I'm just going to slide the skin all the way to one side and let the tarp drop. Okay, it's at this point that I check to make sure that the ridge line is not twisted, the tarp's twisted. If so, I just release the Dutch clip and uh, it's pretty simple, just attach it back once I clip the tarp where it needs to be. At this point, the tarp is laying over top of the hammock. I mean, the tarp is touching the ground. You can see the amount of coverage you get with this tarp. Um, can be kind of hard to judge the distance you need for your tie outs on the corners and then still be able to close your doors so this is what I do to just make it easier to figure out where to put my stakes at. I take the two doors on the end, I take the cord off of one door, stick it through the triangle ring on the other door and then now the doors are together. I just take pretty close to the shock cord here Run a stake through with the lark's head. And just stab it in the ground. Now at this point, that tells me exactly where I need to put my corner tie outs to make the tarp taut and also have my doors be able to shut all the way. Okay, here we are, completely pitched. This is what's called storm mode. You're outside in the woods, calling for 70-80% chance of rain, it's a nasty weekend, but you're out there, nothing you can do about it, just batting down the hatches. I left one door open so I can walk you inside and show you how much room is still there. As you can see, I pulled the stake and I'm using two stakes on this end to crisscross the doors now. So those doors are completely sealed off. Tarp is nice and taut. And these are what I have on my tarp. I have these Dutch worms here. All I have to do is put the loop around the stake right here. Pull the tarp taut. Shock cord tensioner. Just make a little loop. Wrap it around that uh, Dutch worm. They work great. I went to this because uh, even in the rain, I can reach outside there, being next to the tarp, and adjust the tarp if I need to. Walk around on and side here. As you can see, you can see how close the tarp is down on the hammock. And not to worry about the tarp being too close because once your weight is in the hammock, the hammock will actually drop down and probably just still give you about eight inches or so between the tarp and the, and the hammock. But as you can see, the doors are shut off. Plenty of room. There's also side tie outs there that you could uh, use your hiking pole or whatever to stake that off and actually open the tarp even further. Brandon has a video on that, uh, on basic tarp setup if you want to check that out. I very rarely use that, I don't think I need it. But there's plenty of room to sit down in your hammock, relax, ride the storm out. Um, honestly, I've been in, this, in several rainstorms with this tarp and never ever gotten wet.
Okay, and finally, my favorite way to use the tarp, porch mode. As you can see, I've taken my hiking poles. I've got uh, my head in there is a little lower than the uh, foot in uh, to allow the rain to run off. Um, if you've got a light rain, you can leave it like this. It's no problem at all. Uh, I don't. I haven't been carrying my hiking poles lately, uh, but you can find sticks out there to prop up, and uh, I usually just prop one end of it up at, at this point. But uh, you can see I haven't done anything with the backside. The doors are still staked off, and they now act as an extra wind block on either side to uh, completely hug around the hammock. So if you've got wind coming from the backside, it's blocked off. Um, it's a nice way to sit in there and relax and just stare at the wood and now for finally let me show you how I uh, do my doors when I'm not using them I actually use mitten clips here I have probably about six to eight inches of shock cord on each door and this line here is actually Z line a Z pack Z line I think it's 1.25 millimeter and I've probably got 16 inches or so. You want enough to where the shock cord will stretch and then a mitten clip on either end. As you can see here I had the mitten clips as they came and they were a pain to get off of these triangle rings so I actually snipped a little keeper off, used some sandpaper to uh, sand down the sharp edges and now I can just unclip, unclip it quickly. And the thing I, I like about doing my doors on the inside like this, with the tension on the shock cord, it actually acts as a little bit of a, a break. If the wind's blowing from the outside, the shock cord actually keeps the tarp up. And uh, that's a nice little feature of them. But at this point, I could do all four doors like this and turn this tarp into just a standard hex tarp which actually this tarp is a Warbonnet Mamba Jamba. The only difference is the doors on this one. Other than that, they're the same size tarp. So I hope that answered some questions for some of you on uh, the Warbonnet Superfly, you know, whether or not you should purchase it or not, or just answered some questions about how to set it up. So until next time, happy trails. And I'm gonna take a nap.